Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Bethany. I'm the girl behind Well Love Knits. And I know what you're thinking. Bethany, did you knit that sweater? No, I did not. I'm really sorry. I don't have a pattern for you. I've never worked brioche in my life. guys, but I've been really trying to figure out how I feel about the balaclava trend that is taking over Instagram. And um, a lot of makers have been making it this year. There have been so many patterns that were released and I really love it. I think the look is really great, but I was just always hesitant to cast on a project for myself just because I wasn't sure how I would like it for myself in my wardrobe. Would I get a lot of wear out of it? Because you know, I always, when it comes to a project, ask myself that question before I get started. Will this be something that I get a lot of wear out of? And most of the time, if I'm not sure, I wait <laughs> to see if maybe my opinion will change to a definite yes. So basically the balaclava is just this like ski mask without a covering on your face. Some of it does go up to over your mouth, but a lot of the ones that I've been seeing just frame your face and have a very snug fit around your head. Um, it's supposed to be really good for the winter months, definitely keeps you nice and warm. I really love the look. I think it looks great on a lot of different people and that's not to say that I don't think it would look good on me, but it wasn't until I saw a couple of versions that were much looser of a fit, more like a hood from like a hoodie, that I started to get kind of intrigued in the trend and I think that's what I wanna make today. So. Um, I was going through my stash to kind of see like what I could scrounge up, what I wanted to use. I have this yarn here from the Yarn Lovers. This is a wool packa blend. It's a mix of wool, polyamide, alpaca, and polyester. And it's in this really nice aubergine color. Originally, I wanted to make a sweater out of this, potentially something like my seamless mock neck sweater. Um, but I don't think I have enough skeins for that to actually become reality. And in reality, this yarn uh, doesn't go as far as the Drops Alpaca, for example, or even the Wool in the Gang Al Pacino Merino, because this one is actually 50 meters per 50 grams, which is half that of um, the other ones that I've mentioned. So the reason I picked this out of my stash is not just because I was looking for a use for it, where I am definitely looking for a project that I want to use. I also am intrigued by um, the color. I really like it. I think um, it's a very beautiful, nice muted purple tone. And I really like that about it. And it adds a little bit of color, but it's not too out there and it's still muted so that it will match a lot of my outerwear, which is very neutral and muted. And I was pretty certain that I was going to use this because I even knit up a swatch uh, in garter stitch, which is the stitch that I want to work up this balaclava in. And it's still a little damp, but I had already put an, a swatch together. But then it dawned on me that I have a lot of scraps of feeling good yarn in my stash or that equivalent. I have a lot of colors in this yarn here from other projects that I've done in the past. A lot of green, actually. I have some cinnamon color. Um, I have some white. Drops Wish as well, which is also kind of similar. Uh, ooh, I even have this like really nice red color. So now I'm kind of going back and forth in that, do I want to use up these scraps and save that yarn? Or do I want to just go with what I already swatched up for? The advantage here is that I could work in two strands with chunkier needles and create a mismatched effect, a very scrappy effect, you know, by using two different tones together. It has that like mixed media look, which I think is really cool and also on trend. This is definitely appealing to me more <laughs> now that I'm seeing it here. It's, there's just a lot of different colors to choose from. 
So I'm wondering if that's the way I should go. This would be a very colorful option, kind of fun to mix and match different colors. I could get a lot of scraps out of my stash, whereas I still, I probably won't use all of the yarn from the yarn lovers that I have. I think I have about six skeins. So one balaclava is definitely not gonna use up six skeins. So I should probably wait and see if I could work something else up. So I think that makes up my decision. We're gonna use this really fluffy alpaca yarn. What kind of yarn is this? It's really escaping me. It's the yarn, it's like a chain on the outside and then the yarn is blown inside. So they basically have this little netting on the outside and then on the inside it's nice and fluffy, which makes it pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't prepare a swatch, so I'm going to knit something up and then we'll figure out how I wanna work this balaclava. Okay, so I just wanna interrupt for a second to kind of explain the design that I think I'm gonna go for and what I like best about these balaclava styles that I've been seeing, what I can really wrap my head around, because there are a lot of different constructions for this type of accessory. Um, but there's one that I think I can kind of just wing it uh, and it looks pretty easy to kind of just make it up as you go. Here are some inspo pictures of what I've been really loving lately. There's some from Wool and the Gang, Witcher Design, um, I think Petite Knit, and of course my favorite thing is knitwear. They all have um, their own versions. And what I've been seeing, what's most common, and what I can really wrap my head around is the balaclavas that look like they start up at the crown and then they pick up stitches on the sides, working back and forth and eventually joining in the round for the bottom ribbing that will kind of secure the hood in place. So I think that's what I'm going to do. It seems pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna be working in a simple garter stitch because I think that'll bring a lot of texture and it's just gonna be the most easy stitch to do when I'm working back and forth. I don't have to purl rows and that sort of thing, so. Yes, let's get into it. To get started, I cast on 14 stitches using the long tail cast on method on six millimeter needles. I'll be using six millimeters for the body of the balaclava and then five millimeter needles for the ribbing and eye cord edge. I decided to knit my balaclava using garter stitch throughout so that I could just continuously knit back and forth and avoid purling and that sort of thing. But I think you could use any stitch that you'd like to jazz this up to your personal style. So what we're making here is a simple rectangle which will sit on the crown of our head. Since I had a wide range of scraps that I wanted to work with, I tried my best to make the color change as organic or like random as possible. So I was definitely working with a big tangled mess and lots of ends to weave in. Here are the dimensions that I went with for the crown. And here is the approximate stitch count and rows. This might change depending on your tension. So definitely knit a swatch to see what works best for you. So I have my 14 stitches on this spare needle right here. I just picked up, you know, whatever I had. And this is going to be the back of the balaclava. And so what I need to do now is pick up stitches here and along this side as well. This will remain open because it's going to be the front. So I'm looking at each of the knit stitches in between. I think that's going to be the easiest way to pick up all the stitches on the side. <clears throat> and I think that'll also provide a nice even look. And by the way, this is right side facing up. So I made sure to pick up my stitches with the right side facing me. So now it's nice and rounded. Look at that. Um, because we turned the corner and picked up basically every stitch, we now have, okay, so that's 21 on each side. So that's 42 plus 14, that's 56. We have 56 stitches active on the needles. And now what I'm going to do is just continue to work back and forth uh, and create a lot of length until it kind of fits around my head. And then we will be able to join it all together in the round and then create ribbing. It's really that simple. 
so yeah, I'm just gonna continue. With the color change, what I've been doing is um, alternating every one or two rows um, and trying not to do the same combination more than two rows. I have a lot of colors to choose from, which is really great. And so what I've been doing is either after one or two rows, I take one strand that I've been working with and then combine it with a new strand and then do a couple rows and then either switch back. Um, so that creates this effect where it looks very mixed up um, and almost unintentional. And I've been having a lot of fun working with this kind of technique. It's really, it's really cool. I want to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Do you have a specific skill that you're trying to learn in 2022? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From fiber arts to photography, illustration, and graphic design, you can find so many classes that will match your goals and interests. I've been enjoying Skillshare because it's a great way to enjoy a little me time to pick up my knitting and learn something new. This month, I've been diving into how to stay productive as a creative and have learned a lot of useful tips along the way. I'm currently taking the course Personal Productivity, Five Exercises to Make Your Big Goal a Reality. This course has been a really great way for me to break down my goals, connecting my small steps to the final achievement. I know that the skills that I'll take away from this class will create a lot of value for me, allowing me to stay on track with my personal growth and goals of 2022. The best part is, is that it's ad-free so I can stay in the zone and there's always something new to discover. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare. I kept trying on my piece until I worked a number of rows that provided a nice fit on my head, and then I was finally ready to join both sides together and work the final rows of ribbing. Again, I cast on 14 stitches, the same number of stitches of the width of the crown that we started with, and began working in one by one rib for approximately 18 rows. So here I picked up about 80 stitches around the opening and we're gonna work an I-cord edge. So if you're just working on it from scratch and pick up your stitches and then you need to cast on three additional stitches before you get started. So as you can see here, we got a little I cord forming. And basically what I'm doing is I cast on three extra stitches to the number of stitches that I picked up in the round of the head opening. And I'm continuing to work these three stitches multiple times, sliding them back and forth off my needles uh, from each needle to create this I cord and it kind of makes it so that it folds into itself because we're doing these steps and I'll show you exactly how to do it. So I have these three stitches on my right needle because I just finished one stitch so I need to slide these back over and to knit an I cord you do as follows. You knit two stitches, the first two, And then you take the next two stitches, this third stitch, as well as the next stitch that has been picked up by you, insert your right needle through the back loop. So from behind of the next two stitches, you're going to knit these two stitches together. And by doing that, your working yarn is back here on this third stitch. Now, after you do those three steps, you slide your stitches over back on to the left needle. And you'll do that process over and over again, starting with this first stitch. You'll knit this stitch and your yarn is actually on that third stitch. But when you knit this stitch, 
with your working yarn. It's actually what makes the eye cord kind of roll over and have that nice rounded edge. So then you knit the next stitch. And then you take the next two stitches on the left needle and insert your right needle through the back and knit those two together. So that's how you're casting off one stitch at a time, but you're working those three stitches. And this stitch will do that cast off by knitting two together, and then you slip the stitches and you continue to do it over again. And this edge will roll over on itself because you're using your working yarn from the third stitch to knit those first two stitches, and then knitting the last next two together and repeating those steps over again. So it's a little repetitive, but it's extremely easy and it creates this really nice, neat edge on the side of your work. You can also do this without having to pick up your stitches. You can do it at the end uh, when you just want to bind off. You would just do the same thing. You would just cast on three stitches instead of picking up stitches. You cast on three and then work those stitches that are already there. You can see that it's looking really, really good. This is the yarn that I have yet left. Not so sure I'm gonna have enough brown, but we will see. Could also be kind of interesting to have like a change right here. So I'm gonna keep doing this and then I'll show you the final look of this balaclava. thoughts about this project. First of all, for someone who had been on the fence about balaclavas, I'm absolutely in love with it now that it's done. Um, I definitely see why a lot of people have been knitting them up this season. And um, yeah, it's just really cool. I was outside, lots of people were walking around, but I didn't really care because I felt kind of incognito and I thought that I looked super cool, almost like a 60s spy. So I really didn't care at all that I was wearing sunglasses in like overcast weather. Anyway, I just really loved wearing this, I, th I think it's really nice. It's definitely really warm. Um, and I also really just love how it looks when you just like have the hood. I think that adds a little bit of something, especially if you're wearing a jacket that doesn't have a hood. Definitely really nice to have and it's really keeping my neck super warm. I would definitely recommend the Feeling Good yarn for this. Not only is it super soft, it has a lot of warm factor, especially if you're knitting it in such a tight gauge with multiple strands. I definitely really love how the result turned out. It's all over the place. I don't mind that at all. I think it just, it's really cool. And I got rid of some scraps, which is perfect. Definitely always need to find a, a use for the scraps that I have in my stash. So I really think that this was a super easy project. I didn't have a pattern. I was kind of just winging it as I went. And as you can see, it fits really well. And again, it's really warm, so I'm kind of sweating a little bit. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If my hair is all over the place, I'm sorry. Um, and definitely use this tutorial to make your own balaclava. Um, you can, I think, easily alter the type of stitches that you use. So I use garter stitch, but you could use stockinette, whatever else you'd like. Um, so simple. I feel like this looks really complicated. Um, but I think it was almost easier to knit this than I've had sometimes knitting hats and that sort of thing. So definitely give this a try. I'm out of breath. <laughs> so I'm going to end this video here. I really appreciate you guys watching and following along this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you liked it and maybe subscribe to stick around and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.